Grace and peace be unto you and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Walker. We welcome you on another Bible study night. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Still in the book of Revelation. We're in the 11th chapter and we want to pick up from where we left off. And I want to say to those that are viewing our stream on tonight, we trust and pray that you're maintaining your safety. Uh, you continue being sanctified as well as sanitized. Praise God. And, and right before right before we we go any further, I want you right where you are. Just join us in a word of prayer as we uh, get ready to expound on the word of God. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus is our prayer that you would help me to articulate and communicate your word with simplicity and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer that you would bring everything back to my remembrance, that you would quicken me according to the word. And it is my prayer, Father, that the viewing audience will give ear to the things that will be taught on tonight and said, O oh God. Anoint our eyes with eye salve that seeing we'll see, and our ears that hearing we will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying on tonight. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I want to encourage you very strongly uh, to join us each and every Wednesday as we study in the book of Revelation. Um, uh, someone uh, sent me a message a few days ago, and they had v viewed one of the uh, teachings concerning the book of Revelation, and they said they're basically that their eyes, their spiritual eyes, were being opened to some things that they never saw or read in the Word of God before as it re pertains to the book of Revelation. And... Um, and they also made mention of the fact that, that that's one book that they've never really read. And so I want to encourage you very strongly, start reading this book. Because God pronounces a blessing upon those that will read and hear uh, uh, the, the words of this prophecy as recorded over in the first chapter in the third verse. Bless are they that read, hear. Ah. It, it, this, this word, this book, okay, he pronounces a blessing upon them. And so if you want to be blessed, glory to God, start reading the book. Don't be intimidated by the book. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Keep in mind, for all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction and correction in righteousness that we might be perfectly and thoroughly furnished into all good works. So that in itself ought to encourage you to want to read the book. And then, you know, what I hear a lot of people says, well, I have a hard time understand, understanding the book. Well, one of the key verses to helping you understand it is that 19th verse of the uh, first chapter. And we, we normally always read it. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. So I just want you to look at the 19th verse because listen to what it says. He says, write the things which you've seen. Uh, and this, this is very key to understanding the book of Revelation. Write the things which you have seen, which you have seen. Because you see, it's broken up into three parts. What is it, what, what is it that John saw? What are the three things? What was it that he saw? He says, write the things which you've seen. It's all recorded basically in the first chapter because it's the vision of Christ in the midst of the candlesticks. That was, listen, that was what he saw. What else did he see? He says, and write the things which are. The things which are concerns the churches. Okay? There were seven churches. The things which are concerns the churches in chapters two and three. And, and then he says, and the things which shall be hereafter, that concerns events after, after the church age, after the rapture of the church, as well as the great tribulation and throughout uh, eternity, okay? Throughout the remainder of those, those, um, those, those the, the rest of those chapters, because that takes you from from the fourth chapter on to the end of the 22nd chapter. So those are events. Those are things that are going to take place. And it's divided into those three parts to give you an understanding of, of the things that's going to take place. And let me say this. R r listen, this is the word of God. And if God said it's going to happen, guess what? It's going to happen because God is not a man that he should lie. Now the son of man that he should repent. So if God's word says it, listen, just believe it and that settles it. But you have so many people who can read the word of God and read what it says and say, well, I just don't believe it. 
Well, listen, listen. Without faith, it's impossible. Listen. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe he is. And so you, listen, listen, you have to and need to believe the word of God. If, it's, if it says it, guess what? It's going to be so. God can't lie. Keep that in mind. It's going to be so. God cannot lie. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. We're in the 11th chapter. And of course, the 11th chapter begins with the, the, the two witnesses, which is Enoch and Elijah. And, um, uh, and, and you know, just, just, just a quick review. Uh, verse 3 says, and I will give my power unto my two witnesses. Listen, and, and they'll prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three score years. Listen, clothed in sackcloth. We, we covered all of that. And so these witnesses are going to be preaching during that tribulation period. You know, and, and, and as we move towards that latter half, that latter half of that tribulation period is going to be far greater than anything that has ever happened on this earth. Are you hearing me? And, and verse 6 tells us that they have power to shut up heaven, that it rain not in the days of this prophecy, and they have power to turn the waters to blood and to smite the earth with plagues. Listen, verse 7 says, and when they have, fin listen, and when they have finished their testimony, when they will have finished their testimony, look at this, then the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Keep in mind, Satan can do no more than God allows him to do. I'm going to say that again. Satan can do no more than what God allows him to do. And so uh, the, 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 the Antichrist is going to receive greater power uh, from, from, from Satan, okay? He is. And then verse 8 says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So the city is Jerusalem, okay? And, and the apostle describes the, the sinfulness of Jerusalem by, you know, by saying that spiritually it's Sodom and, and, and the sin, listen, and, and by saying Egypt of the worldliness concerning it. Are you hearing me? And, uh, 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 you know, we, 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 listen, listen. And because of these two witnesses going to be, listen, they're going to be preaching. Are you hearing me? Calling to repentance. Are, are you with me? And, and, and they're going to be in the streets. Listen. During that time period, listen, and look at verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie, listen, their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom, and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So this city is going to be turned into a... Um, a, a city of such great sin. Listen, homosexuality. Are you with me? Because notice he used the term. Notice the term spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Egypt is worldliness. Sodom is homosexuality. Are you hearing me? And, and it's, it's very obvious. And, and, and then verse 9 says, And they of the people and kindreds, and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies for how long? Three days and a half. And one of the things we've said, no doubt, all of this is going to be televised, televised some type of way. The, 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 the world will see it. Are you hearing me? And even though mostly all of this will be concentrated uh, to that region, but guess what? The media outlets, trust me, the media outlets will no doubt be broadcasting all of these events that will be going on during that tribulation period. Are you hearing me? And it says, and they are the people and the kindreds and the tongues and the nations shall see their dead bodies, shall see their dead bodies. So obviously then, it, listen, when John wrote this, guess what? We, we, don't, we didn't have satellite. We didn't have television. We didn't have internet. We had none of that. But now we do. Are you hearing me? And so, again, and they of the people 
and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead body. Notice what it says. Kindreds, tongues, and nations. Nations are going to see them doing this preaching. Then nations are going to see them, listen, when they have been killed by the Antichrist. Are you hearing me? And uh, I got to say this again. Satan can do no more than the Lord allows him to do. And it's only during this time that God is going to allow, listen, the Antichrist to kill these two witnesses. And their, their bodies is going to be in the street. Listen, and, and notice what else it says in that latter part of the ninth verse. And it says, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. In other words, the Antichrist is not going to, listen, allow their bodies to be buried. Why, why, why would that be? Because these two witnesses has caused so much problems for him. Are you with me? And so it's, it's like a notch in his belt. It's like a trophy for him that after they are killed by the Antichrist, then it's, it's like gloating for him to say, I'm the Messiah. I'm Christ. I'm God. Because I destroyed, I killed these two witnesses. But he, he was only able to do it because God allowed him to do it. And I have to say again, Satan can do no more than what God allows him to do. And so notice what it says. And he won't suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. In other words, he won't allow them to be buried. Because he's going to make a spectacle out of this. It, listen, it's, it would seem and appear as though the Antichrist has triumphed, but it's just temporary. It's a temporary triumph, if you will. Let's read the next verse. Look at verse, look at verse 10. It says, and they who dwell upon the earth shall what? Rejoice over them and make merry and send gifts one to another. In other words, there's going to be a celebration by the people and by the Antichrist. Are you with me? Because he thinks he has, listen, rid himself of those two witnesses. Notice what it says again. And they shall dwell upon the earth and shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Why? Look at the latter part. Because these two prophets tormented them who dwell on the earth. My God. And that's what real true prophets will do. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. See, true, prof true prophets. Listen to what I'm saying now. Not talking about prophets. True prophets will call attention to that which is wrong. Are you hearing me? True prophets will do that. True, true prophets will call attention to that which is wrong and let you know we need to change direction. Are you with me? Glory to God. Glory to God. But it seems as if the Antichrist will have the victory here, but he won't. It's just temporary. It says, because these two prophets, listen, tormented them who dwell on the earth. My God. Then look at verse 11. And it says, after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God, hear this, entered into them and they stood upon their feet. In other words, these two prophets, Enoch and Elijah, Guess what? They're going to be raised. Listen, they're going to be raised from the dead. And again, I've said this before. No doubt this is going to be televised throughout the world. Are you hearing me? And, and, and what, what a miracle this is going to be. What a miracle this is going to be. And notice what it says in the latter part. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. It's going to be a miracle of, ma of massive proportion. Let's go back and read verse 11 again. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God. Look what God does. See, the, see, prior to this, people were making merry. Listen, nations were seeing all of this. They were, they were overjoyed because the two witnesses had been killed. But listen, look what God does. God intervenes in the midst of this. Look at verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life, what? From God 
entered into them, the two witnesses, and they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. One of the, one of the things that's wrong with us, people have lost the fear of God. During this time, there's going to be great fear. There's going to be such a fear. And, 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 and our, our world today has lost its fear for God. It has lost its reverence for God. Are you hearing me? And look at verse 12. And they heard a great voice. Where, where did it come from? It says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither to the two witnesses. They're going to be raptured at the conclusion, okay, of, this great of the great tribulation period. They're going to be raptured at the conclusion of the great tribulation period. Because it says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And this, this is going to be, this will be among the last of those that are in that first resurrection of life. Let's read the rest of that verse. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. Listen. And their enemies beheld them. Wow. Wow. The Antichrist had killed the two witnesses and he could only do it because God allowed him to do it. And he was gloating because, listen, he wants to be worshipped. He wants to be the Christ. And he's so deceived. Are you hearing me? And so God intervenes and raises up those two witnesses, raptures them to heaven. Are you hearing me? My God. And the, the, the enemies are going to behold all of that. They're going to view all of that. They're going to see all of that. In verse 13, at the same hour, there was a great what? Earthquake. Wow. And the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. A tenth part of the city, listen, fell. That's referring to Jerusalem, all right? A tenth part fell. And notice, and the earthquake was slain of men, what? 7,000. The remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. So it seems and appears then that they're going to be some, listen, that they're going to be, be some people who gave their hearts to Christ during that time frame or during that time period. And, and one other thing I wanted you to notice here. It says, were slain of them 7,000. That, that was the same number that was reserved for Elijah in his former days over in Kings. Let's read on. Because now the, the, the seventh tr trumpet, listen. It says, the second woe is past. So this, this, this second woe took place under the sixth trumpet judgment, okay, as, as recorded in uh, Revelations 9. And it says, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. And the seven, listen, and the seven angels sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, my God, and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And this, listen, this was said in anticipation, and, will, and it's going to come to pass at the conclusion of the three and a half years of the tribulation period. It is going to come to conclusion at the end of the three and a half years of the tribulation period. Are you hearing me? And the second coming of our Lord. Look at verse 16. It says, And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats, on their thrones, listen, fell upon their faces. And what did they do? Fell upon their faces and they worshiped God. My God. They worship God. And in worshiping him, what did they say? Saying, we give you thanks. Glory to God. Can you worship him right now and give him thanks? And, and listen, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of 
what is going on? Can you, listen, th th this, this is a pattern for us. Can you worship him right now? Y listen, things may not be going like you wanted to go. Things may not be happening as you expected it to happen. But can you still pause and stop and worship God? Can you still bless him? Can you still honor him? Can you still glorify him? Can you still magnify him and exalt him and extol him and lift him up? Can you still bless him right now? Saying, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty. Listen, which are, which are, and was, and are to come. Talking about the eternal one. That's the same as Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. These are, this is going to take place, beloved, during that tribulation period. Are you hearing me? At the conclusion of that. Saying, we give you thanks, O Lord Almighty, which are, and was, and are to come. Because why? You have taken to yourself your great power and what? Reign. And, and this, this speaks of the anticipation. In other words, it's, it's, what, it's what the Lord is going to do, what he's going to most definitely do, what's going to most definitely happen. Listen. And it says, and the nations were angry and your wrath is come. My God. And this, this, this has to do with the coming battle of, of Armageddon. And he says, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, that you should give reward unto your servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them who fear or reverence your name, small and great. And that, that, that refers to the coming, uh, the judgment seat of Christ, not the great white throne judgment, but the judgment seat of Christ, because that's where the believers are going to appear as the judgment seat of Christ. The world is going to appear before the great white throne judgment and should destroy them which destroy the earth. Again, that's, that's speaking of the battle of Armageddon, which, which Christ is going to engage in in the second coming. Because you see, the tribulation period, listen, the purpose of the tribulation period is to bring Israel back to God. Are you hearing me? As well as, as well as God's judgment upon the world for its rejection of his son Jesus Christ and of the sin. Are you hearing me? In verse 19, listen, and the temple of God was open in heaven. Wow. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, which is referring to the ark of the covenant, okay? Uh, which, again, served as a pattern, if you will, uh, for the ark of the covenant in the tabernacle in the temple. And it says, and there were lightnings. There were voices, there were thunderings, and an earthquake and great hail, which is, is a, a, a picture, if you will, or symbolic of, of the, the, the awful presence of God and his majesty and his glory. Listen, beloved, one of the things I've consistently said, much of what we see now are just little small snippets or small previews of what's going to come at a later time. But guess what? The, the, the church won't experience it because the church will be taken up in the rapture. The church will be removed from here. Are you hearing me? And then the world goes into the tribulation period, a seven year period. And the latter half is going to be something unimaginable. And these are, these are the things that, that, that we're reading to you. Are you hearing me? There's a real God in heaven. And there's a real judgment that's coming. And yet, listen, yet the world don't believe it. Even to a great degree, many of the, in the church don't believe it. Because I've, I've consistently said that we're in the, listen, we're, in the, we're still in the church age. And we're in the age of the church of Laodicea. And, and, and in my close, I just want I just want to read something to you. Let's 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 review something from from the very onset. Go back with me, if you will.
to the third chapter of the book of Revelations. And I, I want to commence reading at that 14th verse. And it says, And unto the angel of the pastor of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witnesses, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, referring to the church of Laodicea. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, I would that you were cold or hot so that because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. Listen, I will spew you out of my mouth because you say I am rich, I'm increased with goods, and I have need of nothing. And, 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 and the church, listen, the church today, the church today, they, they equate material goods okay with spiritual blessings which you're not are you hearing me and, and, and listen to what he says and knowest not that you are wretched you are miserable you are poor blind and naked they were gloating over their material wealth listen listen in that we're still in the church age in the church of Laodicea the apostate church that's why the, listen that's why the rapture has to take place to keep the church from going into total apostasy that's why the second coming has to take place to keep the world from being totally destroyed are you hearing me know us not that thou art wretched miserable poor blind and naked my God the, the, the church today gloats over its material wealth but then look what has happened COVID has set in and listen and in, 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 in many and in many parts and regions they can't even have a small assembly to assemble are you hearing me are you hearing me and and, and much of much, and I, I've said this numerous times, much of what has happened throughout the world can be laid at the feet of the church. Why do you say that, preacher? Because if there was more positive preaching, there would be more positive living. I'm going to say it again. If there was more positive preaching, there would be more positive living. I want to say it again. If there was more positive preaching, there wouldn't be more positive living. But yet what the church has done is it's, 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 it's gone after. Listen, it's, it, help me, Holy Ghost. It's gone after riches. It's gone after money. The, the, the prosperity gospel, by and large, has hurt the church in many ways. Now, I believe in prosperity. Okay? I, I teach it and preach it, but I teach it and preach it with balance. Are you hearing me? When, 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 the, when the church was running behind prosperity, we have a society and a culture that's going awry and it is in a cesspool of filth. Are you hearing me? We're supposed to be about the Father's business. We're supposed to be working wide as day because night is going to come when no man can work. Are you hearing me? We, we've been confessing, listen, naming and claiming and confessing blessings while everything around us has been going to hell. When we should have been confessing a new life and our neighbor, the person across the street, huh? Are you hearing me? And, 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 and again, I, I believe in prosperity, but not the prosperity that I hear that's in being espoused from some circles. There was a time that, 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 that the church was rich and the preacher was poor. Now the preachers are rich and the church is poor. Are you hearing? I'm reading it to you right here. Listen, because you say I'm rich, increased with goods and have need of nothing. My God. Mm, 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 mm. And he says, knowest thou not that thou wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked? 
they were, they were not conscious of their spiritual poverty. Let me tell you, let me say that again. They were not conscious of their spiritual poverty. We need to be about the Father's business. We need to be about the Father's business. There are souls at stake. There are people that are lost. There are folk that are leaving here every day who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it is the church's responsibility to be salt and to be light. You don't hide a light behind a bushel. And salt is no good staying bottled up in a shaker. And so sometimes God will allow some things to be shaken in order to get us out of our comfort zone and be about the Father's business. I trust and pray that you receive something from this on tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, 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 and for those that are viewing, listen, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, accept him on tonight. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Jesus loves you. He's not mad at you. Glory to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Glory to God. I'm not out of, listen, I'm not out of word, just out of time. And uh, uh, I, I, again, I want to encourage you to read this book, follow along with us. Should the Lord tarry, guess what? We'll pick up in the 12th chapter on next week and you can just follow right along with us. And we trust and pray that you're being blessed, that you're being helped in some way. Glory to God, that you're being challenged, that you're beginning to get a better understanding of the book of Revelation than over what you've had in the past. Listen, continue to stay safe, sanctified, and sanitized. And until next time, be blessed, we love you, and so does Jesus.